God is fascinating. It is capable of self excitation. Let's see how it does it. In this beautiful animation, we see in yellow the conduction system of the heart. It follows a very strict hierarchy, as we will see. In the intact heart, the primary pacemaker is the so called sinoatrial node, or SA node. It has the highest intrinsic rate of impulses. It generates the first impulse, which is passed down to the heart, following a very strict hierarchy. The SA node is located right here, which is, as we can see, indicated by the asterisk in the upper wall of the right atrium in the opening of the superior vena cava. Now, for the heart to be excited very quickly and effectively, it's got to be a sensitium. What does it mean? Once an impulse is generated, it has to reach a very large number of cells. How does it do it? We have captions between the cells, so they pass the signal from one cell to the other very quickly. We have two systems of the heart, the atria and the ventricles. Why is it important? The atria needs some time to be excited and also some time for full contraction. Only then we would like the signal to be passed down the heart to the ventricles. So there should be an electrical insulation between the two atria and the ventricles. In other words, the atria should not be able to pass the signal down to the ventricles on their own. One of the reasons why the atria are unable to pass the signal down to the ventricles is the presence of the so-called cardiac skeleton. Now, the cardiac skeleton has a number of physiological roles, which I will discuss in a separate part. As far as the conduction system of the heart is concerned, the cardiac skeleton, which we see here as a tissue, is an electrical insulator. This electrical insulator prevents the signal from passing from the atria to the ventricles. Now let's discuss the cardiac conduction system. For simplicity, we can break it down into five different stations. The primary pacemaker, the SA node, it initiates the first signal. So here we see, indicated by the arrows, it goes to the right atrium and to the left atrium following different routes. The route for the left atrium is the so-called Bachmann's bundle. For the right atrium are these three internodal pathways. Here I would like to stress, the second station, the atrioventricular node or the AV node, has already picked up the signal from the SA node very quickly, way before the two atria have been completely excited. The AV node slows down the conduction velocity. Why? Remember, we need some time to fully excite the two atria and also some time for their contraction. So, the slowdown of the conduction velocity by the AV node ensures that first we excite and contract the atria and only then we pass the signal down to the ventricles. So now we start to enter the ventricles. The septum. Station 3. The AV bundle or bundle of his right here. This passes the signal down to station for right and left bundle branches, here and here. Finally, we have the Purkinje fibers. Stations three, four, and five are required for the excitation of the ventricles. It's a large mass of muscle, and the ventricles have to be excited very quickly. So the conduction velocities of station three, four, and five is much faster than the AV node and the atria, as we will see in numbers later. For simplicity, we can say that the conduction, system, the conduction system of the heart is composed of two different types of cells, specialized non-contractile cells and contractile cardiomyocytes. The specialized non-contractile cells have no sarcomeres, in opposite to the contractile cells in the atria and the ventricles. So they have sarcomeres, they do the contraction of the heart. The non-contractile cells, including the cells in the SA node, they generate the impulses. Here we see the cells in the SA node. Here too, basically a cluster of cells without sarcomeres. They keep firing action potentials. We can see here the action potential pattern in the SA node. There's no resting memory potential. This is why they keep firing. These cells keep firing. I'll discuss the details of the action potentials later. Let's take a look at the intrinsic rates of the heartbeat on average per minute. For instance, in the SA node, the primary pacemaker, 70. The AV node, 40. His bundle, 20 to 40. Purkinje fibers, 20 to 40. In other words, if 
for some powerful physiological reasons, the SA node would fail to initiate the first signal. The next station down the conduction system of the heart would take over. If the second would also fail, the third would take over. If the third would fail, the fourth would take over. Indeed, if all of them also fail, there are some cells in the atria which can also generate an impulse. The impulse is spread as action potentials with different patterns. For instance, the SA node, as we can see here, and again, it has no resting memory potential compared to the action potential. For instance, in ventricles, there is stable resting memory potential. Again, I'll discuss the details later. Let's delve into the details concerning the autorhythmicity of the SA node. This is the action potential in the SA node compared to the action potential, for instance, in the ventricles. The same is also in the atria. Why are the cells in the SA node capable of firing? There are several reasons. One of them is due to the presence of so-called HCN channels, also known as funny channels, funny for some peculiar behavior. These channels, HCN channels, hyperpolarization activated cyclic nucleotide gated channels. They initiate depolarization of the SA node cells. They generate the electrical impulse that underlies the contraction of all atrial and ventricular cardiomyocytes. Here we see the funny channels. These funny channels get activated at hyperpolarization, the blue curve. Okay, the blue curve is the action potential pattern in the SA node. Here we have the hyperpolarization phase. This starts the activation of the funny channels. They are permeable to sodium and potassium, probably also to calcium. Sodium going into the cell raises the memory potential slightly. This is the first phase of the action potential in the SA node. At this point, we open up calcium channels. This threshold of the memory potential opens up highly specific calcium channels. Calcium goes into the cells. This is where we have the depolarization phase. Then we start the repolarization until we have hyperpolarization. Hyperpolarization means, again, we open up the funny channels. And this cycle keeps repeating itself, on average, 70 times per minute. Now let's compare this action potential in the SA node to the action potential in ventricles and atria. By convention, there are different numbers for the different phases of the action potentials. The numbers are 4, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Phase 1 is missing in the action potential in SA node. I'll discuss it later. Here again, at hyperpolarization, we activate the funny channels, which we see here, F for funny. So in this phase, not only funny channels are active, but at least two types of calcium channels. So this phase leads to elevation of the memory potential to a threshold, which is required for opening of calcium channels. Then we have phase zero, calcium influx. Then phase three, repolarization. Phase four, hyperpolarization. Again, reactivation of funny channels. This cycle repeats itself seven times per minute. Now let's compare this action potential pattern to the pattern in cardiac muscles in the atria and ventricles. The atria and ventricles have been excited. They receive the signal from non-contractile cells. At this point, phase zero, we open up highly specific sodium channels. Sodium goes into the cells. This leads to depolarization. Then we have phase one. This is mediated by some potassium channels opening up. Potassium leaves the cell. There's a slight dip in the memory potential. Then we have phase two. This is mediated by calcium channels for about 200 milliseconds. At this phase, we have an increase of the concentration of free calcium. Calcium is required to mediate the contraction of the muscle, as we will see later. Then we start the repolarization, and then the cycle repeats itself all over again. Here we see an animation. Remember, the action potential, then we have this phase, mediated by the calcium channel opening. Calcium goes into the cell. There are two different routes from the extracellular space, but also from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. I discussed the details in previous videos. So the action potential leads to increase of the concentration of free calcium, and the free calcium mediates the contraction of the heart muscle. The SA node is subject to autonomic control. 
by the sympathetic and parasympathetic system. We see here the action potential of the SE node cells. The sympathetic system leads to shift to the left. It speeds up the action potential. The parasympathetic system does the opposite, shift to the right. Here again, we see the conduction system of the etia, which we discussed in details before, but here I have an additional note. These roots in the atria transmit the impulse at the speed of one meter per second. We will see this is much slower than the conduction system in the ventricles. But before, let's discuss the conduction system in the AV node. Remember, the AV node slows down the conduction velocity. We can see here in the numbers also indicated the SE node, time point zero, generates the signal. Already at 30 milliseconds, the signal has reached the AV node. And the AV node slows down the conduction velocity. The question is, why is the AV node able to slow down the conduction velocity? There are some reasons. One of them is the AV node has a low density of gap junctions, so a high resistance to flow of current. Here we see in numbers. Atrial activation is complete within about 90 milliseconds following SA nodal firing. However, the impulse after leaving the SA node takes only 30 milliseconds to reach the AV node. You see, within 30 milliseconds, we have reached already the AV node, but this AV node slows down the conduction velocity. Conduction system of the ventricles, of course, is much more pronounced than the two atria. We see here the bundle branches, but the Purkinje fibers also. Much more pronounced also in the left ventricle, compared to the right. The left ventricle has a larger mass. Here I've got some notes. The impulse enters the base of the ventricle at the bundle of his, and then follow the left and right bundle branches along the ventricular septum. This is right here. And then we have the bundle branches, and finally the ventricles, uh, the Purkinje fibers. These bundle branches transmit the signal at the velocity of about two meters per second. The Purkinje fibers, four meters per second. Remember, four meters per second much faster than the conduction velocity in the AV node and the atria. Here we have a summary. The numbers in green indicate the time it takes the signal to reach a different phase, a different state, a different point and segment in the cardiac muscle. The numbers in brown are the conduction velocities. The conduction velocity of atrial muscle is about 0.5 meters per second. And let's compare this to the conduction velocity in the AV node. You see here, 0.05 meters per second. This is a tenth of the conduction velocity in the atrial muscle. But then let's compare this number to the numbers we achieve in the Purkinje fibers, 4 meters per second. You see, it's much faster in the Purkinje fibers than in the AV node and the atria. Finally, some clinical aspects. I will discuss the details in follow-up parts. For instance, antiarrhythmic drugs. Let's take, for example, ivabradin. Ivabradin inhibits the phonic channels. It slows down this phase. So the activities of the phonic channels this reduces the heart rate. There's also some other candidates, which I will discuss in details in follow-up parts. I hope this was helpful.